Judging a book by its cover, which is a, <laughs> a real thing. I mean, we do, and it's an important thing to know about if you're a book designer, I think, understanding uh, what that responsibility is all about. Yeah, books are interesting because they are, um, you know, they're consumer packages in a way. Um, you know, um, what you buy when you buy a book, and this is true whether you're buying a digital book or whether you're buying a physical book in a bookstore, or you're buying it online and having it delivered to your house, you're actually buying the stories inside, the information between those covers, the images and the words that uh, some author or authors have kind of assembled for you to achieve a certain effect. So the cover of the book, the outside of the book, has to function the same way on some level that the um, pictures on a box of cereal or the label on a, um, a bottle of uh, spaghetti sauce works. It has to sort of promise something about what's inside. It telegraphs what's inside, and this is particularly, um, uh, I think, a concern when you're dealing with clients, right? So your editor, editor may feel one way, your client may feel another way, and you feel a third way. And we want to talk first about the idea of magazines, because I think that there's a rich history in how designers have navigated this territory. Uh, so just quickly to take you through some of the greats, uh, and I'm really delighted to be starting with a woman, C.P. Pinellas, who was a designer of uh, many uh, publications uh, in the middle of the century. So you can see by these two covers for Seventeen magazine, the playfulness of the image on the cover, the way the lines of the umbrella kind of correspond to the slant of the letter forms at Seventeen, the reflection, the woman leaning over to the side, the one on the top with the the bicycle. So this is sort of the beginning of, after a lot of state publications in the early part of the 20th century, the idea that the magazine could be playful, and that playfulness was itself an invitation to buy the magazine and look inside. Henry Wolf uh, worked at many magazines, including uh, Esquire, started a magazine called Show, and uh, I think made a name for himself at um, Harper's Bazaar. And I think, uh, like C.B. Pinelli's, he understood that, um, you know, these magazine covers were in a battle for your eyeballs. Um, books can be, books have always been more expensive. Uh, magazines are much more of an impulse buy, even to this day. If you're at the airport or if you're going by a newsstand, uh, if you think you're going to have, um, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour to kill, you'll think, oh, I want something to read, and a lot of times you will buy a magazine. Then you just scan all these covers and one of them will jump out to you. And um, I'd like to think that we live in an age of universal progress, but I think sometimes there's evidence to the contrary. And I think if you were to go back in time and see a newsstand from the uh, 50s or 60s, or even in the 70s, you'd see, um, you'd see a lot of crummy, horrible covers, but you'd see probably just enough of them like these from Henry Wolf and C.P. Pinellas that just jumped out at you as being just remarkable pieces of graphic design. And I want to mention something else, that for any magazine designer who's dealing with newsstands, which is, for example, <clears throat> an alumni magazine from a school, doesn't necessarily get sold on a newsstand, but if you're bizarre, you have to catch the eye of the consumer. And so we're going to talk very briefly about this idea of cover lines, so Cosmopolitan, GQ. They tell you everything that's inside. They tend to be just these laundry lists of content. So imagine in the 1950s and 60s doing something like this, where the playfulness of the typography evokes the nature of the sound coming out of the phone, but also corresponds to this beautiful composition that probably made people want to buy the issue. And how great that uh, C.V. Pinelli, Pinelli's worked at a time uh, where Seventeen magazine had no cover lines at all. Can you imagine? No cover lines yeah. at all. And then... Um, the Never mind, like 45 ways to like do this or 102 ideas about that, you know. Right. Just, Everything you need to know yeah. about buying squash. Yeah here's, a, yeah, here's a lady with an umbrella, you know. Sign me it. up.